Nestor Cortez is hurt, and Luis Severino is going to have to step up big time in his absence. But how much can you trust him? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. With me, as always, is my producer Steve Granado. Steve, happy Friday. Happy Friday. Yankees ended up splitting that uh, two gamer with the White Sox. Hey, by the way, before we get to Monday, can we hit 2,900 subs? We're almost We're close. There. Yeah. We're close. <laughs> Tell your friend about the show. That's all you got to do right here on YouTube. Hey, we have a preview of the weekend set against Boston. First time the Yankees see the Red Sox, a welcome sight for all of baseball. Them. Uh, fan mail questions. It's Friday. You guys know the drill. Every day is already know. We have your fan mail questions and answers coming up in a little bit. But first, Stacey, Yanks take one of two, end up losing the set to Chicago here this week. Thankfully, the uh, smog kind of disappeared a little bit there <laughs> to play that doubleheader. Luis Severino, that's what we want to kind of focus on here today. Five innings, six hits, four earned. Pair of walks did strike out six socks. Say that five times fast. <laughs> Your thoughts on Sevy right now? Uh, he had a lot of trouble with his fastball today. All three, he gave up three home runs. All three of them were off his fastball. He had 18 swings and only one whiff. And technically, the whiff was really a foul tip. So it wasn't really totally a whiff, but you know, um, he just. He said in the post game he he doesn't know what happened between his first two starts and these last two, and he's trying to figure out what happened with his fastball. He was hovering around 95, 96 most of the day, um, but that was <laughs> that was rough. I can't remember who hit it to dead center, but the face that Sevy made when he turned around and saw where the ball was going was actually pretty funny. It was like. And if you're not watching on um, YouTube, it's it's not a pretty face, but watch on YouTube so you can see it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm slightly worried about him. I mean, you know, those guys all hit home runs. Um, you know, Jake Burgers come out of nowhere and <laughs> for the White Sox and uh, likes to ha have extra base hits. And Jimenez and Mancada, I mean, these are guys that can hit the ball. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm worried about him because you know. <laughs> If people are hitting your fastball like that, um, you're going to have issues. He is extremely important right now, right? With Nestor out for... Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Sevy's huge, right? Sevy is with a, I don't want to say flailing Garrett Cole, but with a not April Garrett Cole, mm -hmm. that makes it even more imperative that Severino is a true two. Yeah. Because with the way he's pitching, it's Garrett Cole as your one. And then you have a bunch of guys that are bunched into being fours and fives. <laughs> There's no two or three with the way Severino's pitching. So, um, yeah, he needs to figure out what is going on with his stuff. And the good thing is he's pissed and he's he's not happy, obviously, with his performance. And he let everyone know after the game on Thursday. So um, hopefully he can figure it out because, yeah, he's really big piece right now with how the rotation looks. Yeah, because we still don't know what the Carlos Rodon situation is. He threw a pen this week, faced some live hitters, a.k.a. guys standing in the box. Uh, is it just the cardboard cutout anymore? So that's... <laughs> I guess encouraging. I'll believe it when I see it at this point with this poor guy. But I mean, for all intents and purposes, Sevy has to be the two. Yep. And five innings, four earned, three bombs ain't going to cut it. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's you can't even. Six, seven. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, Clark Schmidt went six in his game. So why couldn't Sevy? <laughs> yeah. It's, it, He's figured it out and not just for the Yankees this season, but what's the free agent market on a guy like that? Right. I, I no idea. Yeah. No idea. What a, what a weird case. What a mm -hmm. weird case. Speaking of weird cases, Randy Vasquez, <laughs> five and two thirds, 
two hits. He got that hit in the sixth, allowed that hit in the sixth. Shut out baseball, one walk, three strikeouts. He's taking over the Brito esque line yeah. right there with that uh, with that performance. Stacy, do you believe this is the real Randy Vasquez? Hmm. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I don't think he's bad. I just this was I don't I don't know what was going on. I was kind of surprised by that because of the way they were hitting Severino in game one. It felt like uh, Severino woke them up, woke up that offense. They put on that hat and that jacket a lot in that first game. And uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the White Sox have a home run jacket and hat that they put on everyone when they hit home runs. And they did that a lot in game one. And Vasquez looked good. I mean, him and Clevenger had like, you know, um, nine up, nine down or Clevenger had nine up, nine down and Vasquez had given up one hit. But I mean, they were he, they were both just going through it in the first few innings and he looked good. I mean, he wasn't totally overpowering, but hey, if, if he could pitch like this all the time, I would take it. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course you would, especially given the state of the Yankees rotation. That That's massive, man. And he's he's trying to make a case. He was technically the 27th man as of this recording we don't know what the roster moves is post game prior to the first game against boston obviously they would have to make a move they ended up adding crook yeah uh instead of making the roster move vasquez i wonder if that's a i mean i think that's just a strategic move just roster wise yeah so vasquez might be what is called returned uh, to Scranton Wilkes-Barre, but might not actually go down there. That's my guess. That way they can use crook over the next four days as uh, you get pulled over again, because your lights are flashing red. I I really don't understand lights again Uh, (laughs) for our YouTube viewers only. That's why you hop over to the YouTube side to see those crazy (laughs) possessed lights in Stacy's room there. But uh, yeah, I I think they might do something in that regard. Just use Crook here so they have that roster spot. They don't need to have Vasquez. It doesn't use an option. It doesn't any of that. So we'll see what they end up doing. Of course, they could always just add Brito and then uh, option Crook. So we'll see how that all plays out. Uh, Willie Calhoun let off both games. Yankees fans that are extremely online were obviously very happy with that call. Um, But I mean... Two run home run in game one. He went two for four with three RBIs. He went one for four with a double in game two. Yeah. Willie Calhoun, Yankees leadoff hitter, Stacy. <laughs> well, right now I take him over DJ because DJ is not doing anything. So, I mean, you know, it's like uh, Boone is taking stuff and flinging it at the wall to see if it sticks. And uh, Calhoun did a pretty good job today. So kudos to him for that. Um, but yeah, uh, they're, they're really trying to find someone to be in the leadoff spot because some of the guys are really struggling. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Willie Calhoun career-wise in the majors, not great as a leadoff hitter. Uh, Not great in the first batting position of the order, I should say. He's got decent numbers as a leadoff when he leads off an inning. So maybe that's the thinking there Hmm. for uh, for Mr. Booney, but uh, he's worse in the nine. He's worse in the nine spot. So I think – lesser two evils i I really don't know there yeah i think again just throw in something see if it sticks (laughs) other weird thing billy mckinney played both games yeah (laughs) one for four with a triple in game one homered in game two we played center and left stacy billy mckinney everyday player Mm, no i don't think so i think they just i don't know maybe they just wanted him to be in the double header and they'll have someone else playing somewhere in <laughs> one IKF, i guess maybe maybe i mean good for him though i mean that's got to be really cool especially like he looked very excited after that triple and i don't blame him and then you know the home run that's quite a performance for him in a double header good for him yeah the fact that he got a start in both games again i i just what 24 hours ago we were saying <laughs> Billy Billy McKinney McKinney. will probably just ride the bench here and maybe come in and pinch hit. All of a sudden, he's starting both games. That goes to show you. I think this is important, Stace. We're idiots. We don't know what we're talking about. We're just we're just watching the game, man. Uh, We just we just watch baseball. We talk about it, but you never know. Because seriously, it's one of the it's one of the most unpredictable sports there is. Honestly, Um, you know who would have predicted the White Sox winning two out of three. You didn't. You Cardinals thought are Yan- in last place. <laughs> the Yankees. You thought the Yankees were going to win two out of three. Yeah. Cardinals are in last place. They have the second worst record in the NL. I mean. <laughs> Carlos Estevez is one of the best closers in baseball. 
Yeah. Like, wh- <laughs> he what hasn't is- blown a save yet. He's got like 15 saves. You know, well, 15 well, chances. Not that, this is, not that this is surprising, but Arise is batting over 400. <laughs> batting, yeah. Well, that that one I could have predicted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Luis Arise is, is ridiculous, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Let us know in the comments section. How are you feeling about Billy McKinney? Is he going to play every day? Do you anticipate that? I don't anticipate that, but again, I'm an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, do you believe Randy Vasquez? Do you think this is the real Randy Vasquez? Do you trust Luis Severino? Lots to talk about. Willie Calhoun in the leadoff spot. I know you guys are feeling all types of ways. Yankees Reddit was going ham over that lineup. Uh, and so was Yankees Twitter. So, yeah, so I was going to say, so was Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll keep my eye on Reddit. You keep your eye on uh, Twitter. Mm-hmm. Uh, neither of which are uh, places for good conversation in any regard. But hey, here we are. Uh, <laughs> anyway, drop uh, what you're feeling about this lineup construction and how the state of the Yankees are right now. I know you guys are feeling about that. While you're down there, drop your questions for Fan Mail Friday. Of course, it is Fan Mail Friday, so we're going to talk about that. In just a moment, of course, the Red Sox in town for a three-game set starting Friday night. You can catch that whole series on SiriusXM. Let's answer your questions in just a second. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. Steve's been using it this season, and he loves it. So if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for you. They have killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, so you can stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. Game time also has flash deals and last-minute tickets. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area, and they even give you images of your views so you know what you'll be seeing. With their lowest price guarantee and even event cancellation protection game time is the best place to buy tickets in just a matter of seconds two taps and you're set snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again that's code locked on mlb for 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed Back now on Locked On Yankees. Hey, thanks so much for making us your first listen every day. To the everydayers, you already know what's coming up on Monday. It's Miners Monday. You know the drill at this point. A couple of off days next week, by the way, so look out for some longer deep dive discussions as well coming up on the show next week. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any of that. It's Fan Mail Friday. You guys know the drill. You left your questions in our YouTube comments all week, and we are going to answer them now. Stacey. Some regulars checking in and some newbies checking in as well. This first one from a regular teacher Sama checking in our YouTube comments. Sadly, I think Peraza will be moved alongside X other player. And I hope he gets a starting chance wherever he goes. Thing is, who would you trade for him? Obviously a starting pitcher, but who, who, and bonus question, would you get Zach Plesak who was DFA'd by Cleveland? Stacy, your thoughts on Zach Plesak first. Hmm. I wouldn't pick him up. I feel bad for him though. That was kind of, I was kind of surprised by that move, but um, no, I don't think I would pick him up. I feel like the Yankees have too many. Yeah. And the Yankees have too many questionable dudes (laughs) starting for them right now. They don't need another one. Um, As far as Peraza being moved, we've talked about that. We talked about that in our Oswald episode. Of course, you can go check that out. It's here on our YouTube channel. Uh, But as far as, making a move for a starting pitcher. I'm, I, I mentioned the Cardinals not too long ago. I'm curious to see if this continues to be a mess, <laughs> if they would venture in a Jordan Montgomery trade. It's not completely out of the question for the no, it's not. to try and get them at no, all. It's not. No, I mean, I, I would actually love that move. I feel I felt bad when he was traded. I felt bad that when he pitched for the Yankees, they just never gave him run support, and he was a solid three you know and he just never got the credit for it and that would be amazing actually if it happened (laughs) yeah i mean oswald's an overpay but uh maybe some sort of other deal but i wouldn't be surprised i wouldn't be surprised to see the cardinals try and ship him out uh again if if some if this just keeps being a complete train wreck and uh (laughs) also i think jack flaherty might be on the market there too Uh, He's a free agent next season. He's obviously more of a question mark. He's had a rocky season. He's had a couple of pretty good starts though. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Give it, give it another month uh, to to the all-star break and see if something else happens there. Also, of course, we're still waiting on Carlos Rodon. Yeah. Uh, Drop your 
Peraza trade proposals in the comments while you're around here. Thanks, Teacher Sama, for asking a question. This one's coming from a newcomer, Stacy. Uh, I'm going to assume Jaime Cervantes, if not Jamie, uh, 9533. I have a question about who you would claim for the Yankees uh, or get for the Yankees rotation. Would it be Plesak? Or I wanted to bring this one up again, uh, or not again, Mad Bum. Stace, are you back on the Mad Bum train? Is it 2014? No. <laughs> no. No offense to Madison Bumgarner, but no. Mm -mm. I again. feel like even Mad Bum wouldn't want that. I yeah, feel like no. he's just not a Yankee. No. Right. No. And again, there's too many question marks and I feel like that would projects. be a really big project. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I, I think Sam Breen, the director of pitching is a, is a great smart mind. There's a lot to fix with Madison Bumgarner. There's a lot to fix. And I don't think you could do that in the course of a season at his age, no less. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if they were getting 2014 Madison Bumgarner, yes. Well, I sign up for that every day and twice yeah. on Sunday, but no. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nah, not not with a 10 foot pole mm -mm. Uh, thank you for your question and thanks for joining <laughs> our uh, our family over here on our fan mail friday this one's coming from riff comes meisel man something like that three three seven five friday question i'm afraid to vote for any yankees for the all-star game because invariably somebody comes back hurt or slumping change my mind one not a question uh, i'm just joking <laughs> with you Stacy, change this person's mind on why they should be voting for the All-Star game. Because they're probably going to get in even if you don't vote for them. So just vote for them. Because <laughs> <laughs> Wow, that's real uh, anti-democratic of you, Stacy. I mean, you know, it, that's just the way it happens. But I feel like... I feel like this is a lot of people's complaints about the all-star break. And I feel like there was one player that it happened to that, you know, someone was in a home run derby and they slumped for two weeks after, or someone was playing in the all-star break or break in the game and they came back and they weren't right. Or maybe they hurt themselves or something, but this feels like something that everyone thinks is a common occurrence and it's not. So don't get worried about the all-star game. These guys love playing in the all-star game because it's not a real game. It doesn't, doesn't count for anything anymore now it's a true exhibition again and you know it's fun for these guys so no just vote them in it's fine <laughs> yeah um also it's one game man yeah one game they yeah. can get hurt walking down the stairs like and some guys have <laughs> yes and some guys have i think uh, d rob did one time <laughs> i think i did uh <laughs> one more from the same person Look at you getting two in one day. Mm. Uh, your segment on Miners Monday got me curious. So I turned in, tuned into a Somerset Patriots game. What I saw was pretty appalling. The Patriots looked terrible. Lousy defense, inferior pitching, and basically no hitting. Am I watching this wrong? When watching minor league games, are you looking for wins and losses or just player development? Thank you for being my everyday morning. Listen, hey, an everyday here. Thanks so much. Uh, one, hey, that is awesome that you watched your first Patriots game. I love that. That is the entire goal, by the way, of Miners Monday, aside from, of course, telling you guys what's going on, as I just got an email from our good friend Stephen Cusmano with the Patriots postgame notes. Uh, but that's awesome. I'm so glad you're checking out Minor League Baseball. I'm wearing my Scranton Wilkes-Barre Vejigante shirt from last season. So, obviously, a huge proponent of Minor League Baseball. I love the Miners. Uh, unionized Myers. Solidarity with my, with my fellow players out there. Fellow, like I was a player. Uh, but... <laughs> As far as like watching um, those games, I mean, obviously you're looking for wins and losses always like it's baseball, man. You still want to win. It's still competitive and it's still professional baseball. Like, yeah, we're all here to win and have fun. But yeah, I think you're also clearly watching for the player development. I think that's part of the fun. I think one of my favorite things about minor league baseball, Stacey, aside from the atmosphere and the fan base and all that good stuff is, uh, is the, I knew that guy when factor mm. is so awesome. One of the first players I covered was Cody Bellinger. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was, it's amazing. It, it was amazing. Uh, and Willie Calhoun was on that team. Uh, and so, you know, you grow up, they grow up, and, and it's, it's a really cool thing. Uh, the first team I did play-by-play -play for in the minors, we had Garrett Hampson. You know, and you're just like, man, this is cool. And, and you could see it from the start. And, and you get to watch these guys grow up. Obviously, I was with the Rail Riders last year. I got to watch Oswald Peraza all year. I got to watch Oswald the Cabrera. I got to watch Volpe for a little bit. I watched Brito. I watched Crook. And it's just like, that's the cool thing is that uh, I saw that guy pitch on a random Thursday night in the middle of nowhere. Like, that's what I love about minor league baseball. And there's a lot of 
really talented broadcasters telling really cool stories um, about players that you would never hear of uh, I, otherwise. So if I couldn't make a better pitch for watching a minor league baseball game, it's included with your major league MLB TV subscription. So might as well. Might as well. Um, thank you guys so much for all your questions. Of course, we do this every Friday. You guys have been awesome uh, since we introduced this segment, and uh, we can't thank you enough. So thank you guys so much. You can always drop your questions in our comment section here for Fan Mail Friday. Red Sox in town for three over the weekend. First time. You can catch it all on SiriusXM. We're going to talk about that when we come back. This episode is brought to you by our newest sponsor, Bird Dogs, the best place to buy men's shorts and pants that come with a built-in liner. I've been wearing my first couple of pairs that Bird Dogs sent out to all Locked On hosts, and I love them. Honestly, they're really comfortable. I look better, and I feel great while wearing Bird Dogs. They're also very versatile. You can wear them dressed up. You can wear them dressed down. And, of course, they're cheaper than other big brands, which is always great. I'm always looking for a bargain. My shirt right now I'm wearing is free. Uh, and Locked On Yankees listeners have the opportunity to get some free stuff when you place an order at birddogs.com. Don't worry. They're not just like one and done. They got a bunch of different styles over there you can check out and choose for yourself. That's at birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Enter the promo code locked on MLB and they'll throw in a custom bird dog, bird dogs, Yeti style tumbler with every single order. I use it for my coffee and my tea. Stacy uses it. We love it. That's birddogs.com slash locked on MLB. Back now on Locked On Yankees, new series, new hot, cold heating up. Stacy, who on the Yankees is hot? I will say the bullpen minus the Michael King hiccup in game one of the doubleheader. But aside from that, they did a good job neutralizing the White Sox the whole series. So I'll give kudos to all those guys. And a bunch of them pitched in this series. So um, good, good job by then. It was just one bad pitch by Michael King because then he came back and looked great. So, um, yeah. I'll say the bullpen. It's almost like it's the best bullpen or baseball or something. (laughs) Uh, Stacey, who's cold? Oh, DJ LeMayhew. Poor DJ LeMayhew. He's just... Woof. uh, His batting average is hovering around 235 now, and he's just... He just looks so bad. I feel bad. I mean, at least defensively, he looks okay, but he's just lost at the plate. Yeah, especially for a guy who's battling for playing time now with Josh Donaldson back. Yep. It's a tough, uh, tough combination for him. Stacey, who is heating up? The bottom of the lineup. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah, they had a bunch of hits in the series. And uh, in the 6-5 loss in the first game, they were the ones that powered the offense when the big guys, Rizzo, Stanton, and Glaber, were not doing anything. So, um, yeah, I'm giving them the heating up honors for this series. Awesome. <laughs> uh Yankees fans will love to hear that. <laughs> Pitching matchups for the weekend, it's the Garrett versus Garrett, the all Garrett squad on Friday. Garrett Whitlock versus Garrett Cole. Choose your Garrett. Uh Cole. That was the what was it? The what what did he come out with last time? Cramping. That's what yes. Yes, that's right. Cramping. Yes, he was cramping. So uh we'll see him back on the mound. Hopefully he doesn't cramp. And uh, he can go deeper into the game. Pitched well in spite of that. He did. Yeah. Hopefully they'll give him some bananas and he'll be okay. There you go. Tanner Houck takes the ball on Saturday facing Domingo Herman. Domingo Herman? Question mark here, Stacy. Dot, dot, dot. Is Domingo Herman the most reliable Yankees starter right now? Right now. He is. It's, it's, yes. I mean, who would have thought, who would have thought that was going to happen? But he is right now. It's, oh. uh, Again, we talked about how weird baseball's been this year, and that's one of those weird aspects of it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And then the youngster Brian Bayo versus kind of youngster Clark Schmitz. Uh, two guys that very well could be facing each other in AAA right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, circumstances say otherwise, and they will face each other at Yankee Stadium. Clark Schmidt, though, last couple outings was like three in a row. It's been really nice. Yeah. I mean, you know, other than giving up those two home runs to, um, what's that guy's name? Sevi. Se- Se- Sebi? What was his name? Sebi Savala. Sebi. Like, Sebi? Like yes. a miracle. How did I miss that one? Yes, yeah, Sebi. So, I knew there was a V in the name. I just couldn't remember where the V was. But yes. Um, hey, six innings in his last outing. Six innings, three runs. It's a quality start. I'll take it, even though they lost. But, you know, he's... 
he's taken up in his oh yeah innings so. is high <laughs> by by now by now on, on clark schmidt we'll see how he yeah. pitches on sunday hey by the way didn't mention it at the top we got the elusive matchup in game one burger king yes <laughs> how many how many pictures did you see on twitter because i saw about 15 of them <laughs> oh it was when i opened my reddit app hot hottest post yeah i post on everything i saw on and it had like a couple thousand likes so yeah, the, uploads, other, the, the other day it was, um, was it the Pirates and the Phillies? Wait, who was it? It, it spelled out poop because it was zero, zero mm -hmm. and it was a P and a P. Yes. You uh, know, because people always look for that. Yeah, people always look for that sort of thing. But yeah, I missed the Burger King. I was watching it, but I wasn't really looking at the score bug. And when I saw everyone tweeting it, I was like, damn, I missed that. How did I miss that? Mm hmm. Burger King, go get yourself a Whopper, Spider-Man Whopper in stores and theaters now. Uh, not a sponsor. Hey, thanks so much for checking out uh, Fan Mail Friday. Friday, it's Friday. Get get out. Friday. Of questions, Friday. drop them. You know the thing, man. I've said it fifteen times today. Uh, Red Sox series, Sirius XM, Miners Monday. You know the whole drill. Get out of here. Go do something this weekend. Uh, go go watch the Yankees play this weekend. Should be fun. Yankees Red Sox first time this year. Uh, Stacey, you gonna? By the way, you got to get to a game, right? You haven't gotten to a game yet this year. No, I have not, but I'm not going to a Red Sox game. Mm. I can't. Okay. Well, you won't see Stacy there, but <laughs> go go enjoy yourself. Go go to that little like sweet stand behind third base. You know that little <laughs> sweet stand right there. I don't know. Get an ice cream. All right, that's gonna do it for today's Lockdown Yankees. I'm Steve Granado. And I'm Stacy Gatsoulias. We'll see you on Monday. <laughs>